Hello and welcome to another PHP tutorial regarding object oriented programming. Um, in the previous tutorial, we looked at the constant keyword and um, talking about what is a constant value and how we can access it and so forth. If you haven't done so already, do check that video out. I'll leave a link in the description below as well as in the top right hand corner. Today, however, we're going to look at the static keyword, what it means, how to use it and why it's there. So before I get into that, let's just tidy this up. Let's just remove those three lines because we don't actually need them. Now, the static keyword basically means that, um, well, you put the static keyword before uh, a property or a method. So in the same way as we have public scopes and private scopes, as well as the constant keyword, we would have a static keyword and then the property name um, and then its value, or we would have a static method so it would be like a, a static function and so forth. Now, static properties and static methods can be accessed from outside of the scope of the class in the same sense, I suppose, as um, these uh, uh, constants. So employee colon colon eye color can be accessed from outside of the scope of the class. But uh, the big difference here, well, apart from it being a constant and a property is that um, Static methods and static properties can be accessed without instantiating the actual class itself. So, for example, let's just create a, a, a basic static property. So static, and then we're going to have, uh, we're just going to do employee uh, number, for example. It's, this isn't a very good example, but uh, I'll just put that in for now. So employee number. Now what we can do is in without actually instantiating this class, we can now do echo employee and we can access this employee number like so. so let's save that and let's run this file. So we can actually now get the, the employee number without um, instantiating the class. So there's no instantiation. It's not there's, there's, this isn't being touched, so the constructor isn't being touched at all. We haven't instantiated this class. We are literally just pulling out this uh, property from the employee class. Um, now, likewise with the properties, we can also do these with the uh, with with the the methods. So, for example, I could have a a public static. Oops, if I can spell it, public static function. And we're just going to have this as get um, employee number. Employee number, yep. And we're just going to return um, self because we have to reference itself, employee number. And we scroll down to the to here. And instead of doing like we we had done before, instead of doing uh, variable Jane is equal to a new instance of employee and passing in the variables, we can literally do this. We can do employee colon colon, oops, um, get employee number like that. Let's save that and run this. So we've got the same same value here, 100. And we haven't instantiated the class at all. We are literally running a static method uh, from the uh, the employee class, which is called the get employee number. Now notice I've got a public static, so I've actually put the visibility scope um, in front of or behind of the the static keyword. Now, if I was to change that to private, what do you think is going to happen? If I put that to private and save that, scroll down here. Let's just clear this screen to give us some room and then run that. It's going to throw an error. It's actually going to say that uh, we can't access this private method um, from the context of nothing. Now, this basically means that we can have static uh, methods as well as, I suppose, static uh, properties because we can also do a stat uh, sorry, a public static do it on the, the right side here, public static uh, method. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it means basically that uh, we only this class can actually access this static variable. So 
um, if we were to rem just uh, comment that out, for example, we could do this. If we um, change that to that is still private, what we could do is in the constructor here <clears throat> is we could do self uh, employee number in, and also we can also do self get employee number, which I'm just going to demonstrate. Let's just echo that out. So scroll to the bottom and then we're going to do a new instance. So Jane is equal to a new instance instance of employee passes in all of these variables. I'm just going to put that as um, test test and also test for now. And we don't need to pass the gender because that's optional. Save that and we should uh, have the return or the echo because that's in the constructor. So at 100. So let's just uh, jump into that class again. So notice here on line 24, we are actually echoing out the get employee number method, which is, um, where did I put it? Uh, up here. So we can actually restrict the visibility of these static keywords as well, these static items. So when when is it a good time to use static properties and methods? This is a bit of a controversial topic, I suppose. I haven't really given it a very good uh, example. Um, employee number will be a variable. It's uh, It can change and it, it really shouldn't be defined statically like this. So when is a good way, a good time to use static keywords? Well, in my opinion, um, when you're using things like uh, objects that contain uh, variables that need to change and need to be encapsulated within itself, um, I would instantiate the object and instant and then and then pass the variables through perhaps in a constructor or some setter methods and so forth and i wouldn't actually declare them as static i would only use static uh the static keywords when i'm actually using for example um uh, an object a class that needs to have that has a series of utility methods so for example we could have instead of get employee number we could have um generate Gener rate, um, generate payslip, for example, right? Because that's actually doing something. That's actually a tool that we can use. We don't have to instantiate this um, employee class in order to generate the payslip. We can literally just generate the payslip. Um, and if I was to do change that to something a little bit more um, uh, user friendly let's say this was um p a y e number for example and change that whoops then it makes a little bit more sense so let's just change uh that we're going to need to just remove that down here scroll to the bottom here and we're going to do an echo of employee and it is, whoops. Oh, hang on, bear with me a minute. Let's just scroll back up. What, what have I, what am I missing? Oh yes, yeah, sorry. I need to change that to be uh, public to allow the scope. There we go. So if I was to echo that now, yeah, we have 100. Now that could just be the, you know, that could generate a PDF perhaps of the payslip. Um, one thing I should note though, is in this uh, in this static method, what we can't do is we can't use or reference this within this static method. If I did this, um, uh, let's say job title, for example, or job, let's use job number. Let's just set job number to be 10 and then return that as an example, this is going to throw us an error. So let's just do a clear and then run that. Now we have an issue here because uh, we're using this when not in the object constants, uh, context. And basically that means is that the object itself hasn't been instantiated. 
So um, that's something to definitely look out for. If you're using uh, static uh, methods in this way, you cannot actually use the properties or access the properties in the same way as a normal instantiated class. Okay, so um, here where we're using return this job number, this will only work if the job number is a static job number. And whoops, sorry, I uh, the old magic mouse went a bit nuts there. If I was to save that and change this to be uh, self job number and save that, clear this down. Whoops and then run that again. Now we have the job number, which is 10. Um, another thing I should note is um, inheritance. So the employee extends the person. So if I had um, a static variable on here, so let's say we had static, uh, we'll have a, a, we'll set this to be protected just as a, an example of the variability scope. So a protected static, and we're gonna just we're just gonna call this um, blood type, and it's just gonna be a positive, and save that. Now what we can do is we can access this um, this blood type from uh, from a, another static method. So we could just change this to be. Um, self and then blood type so we can actually access the blood type static variable by calling self and the reason why we can do this is because it extends the person let's save that let's run this again and we have a plus so that's static keywords and static methods and static properties if you've got any questions or comments then please let me know put them in the comment section below um, if you've uh, if you found this helpful, then give it a thumbs up, share it around. Um, maybe others might find it useful too. Follow me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at pfwd. I've also got a Facebook page for this How to Code Well uh, channel, so do check that out. Put the links in those both of those uh, social media things in the description below. Thanks again for watching, and I shall see you again next week. Thank you. Bye.